pre-recorded audio files can be loaded into the layers of the album. There are two possible options, loading layers and loading scenes. We can load files that have been organized in the Arbor library directory on the USB drive into the currently selected layer. This can either be a single audio file or a collection of several short audio files that fill an entire layer. Alternatively, we can load a complete scene that consists of all the content of all audio layers, as well as the settings of the Arbor as a preset file. Six audio files, one for each layer, and the preset files are organized in the Arbor Scenes directory on the USB drive. When recording or preparing audio files to be loaded into the Arbor, the recommended audio format is 48kHz and 24-bit stereo or mono WAV files. Up to 13 seconds audio can be loaded from one file. Any audio beyond 13 seconds will be ignored. If the file is shorter, the remainder in that layer will be silence. No compressed formats are recognized. In order to get into the clone load safe menu, to load in individual layers or entire scenes, press shift, capture and strike in that order. We have three pages. You can navigate with capture to decrease the page number and strike to increase the page number. There are three white LED areas in the snake of the harbor that show the page you are on. Right now, this is on page two, the load scene page. The first one is the clone and the load layer page. Load scene, second page. And save scene, the third page. When turning the layer knob, there's a difference of the Omega LED to be white, having changes then from alpha to zeta, and the Omega LED turning amber. Be aware that the functions are entirely different for what's happening in these pages, dependent on the white or amber Omega LED. White is always an internal function, amber means that you are accessing the USB drive. From that moment, the white will show the slots and the amber LEDs show the banks. I'll leave this menu once more. I remove the USB drive. I re-enter the clone load safe menu. And we can see that now only the internal slots or functions are available. Omega remains white all the time because accessing the USB is not possible. Plugging the USB back in, reloading the menu, we have now access to the USB drive again. When recording a layer and working with it, using destructive editing techniques, like using the overdub to add further material to it, or maybe even dub set to zero and no input in order to punch holes into previous recordings. It can be useful to know that whatever you do to a layer, the material is still safe somewhere. There is a basic undo function available in the Arbor, but often that is insufficient. Musically as well as structurally, it might be interesting to work with material, but then to return to what was recorded first. So for instance, if we now record one layer, Before making any kind of overdub to this layer, it might be useful to clone the layer. This is available in the clone load safe menu. Press shift, capture and strike in that order to enter the menu. Make sure that the first LED area is pulsing and that the layer knob is turned so that the omega is white. 
I leave this menu once more, pressing Shift, Capture and Strike, because it's important to know from where we entered the menu. So Alpha is selected, so Shift, Capture and Strike, and select the layer between Alpha and Zeta, into which we want to copy the material from layer Alpha. So it is important. The layer you entered the menu from is the source that we then clone into the layer we select, ensuring that the omega is not amber but white. Alpha was selected. If I copy that now, for example to beta, double tap shift. We have the animation that something was copied. The upper remains in the menu because you might just want to make several copies. So alpha was now copied into beta, but I want it also to be copied into zeta. Double shift. And in order to now basically say, okay, I have cloned enough, use shift, capture and strike to get out of the menu. Alpha is now pulsing, because the layer knob is not really pointing to the alpha layer anymore. So we need to pick it up to have layer control. I change now to beta and we hear the same material as it is cloned material. Then the other layers are silent except zeta, which has the same material again. So if I now basically go to beta and do an overdub, Just to compare. Clones can be created of overdubbed layers in order to develop the material even further. The cloning process is fast so that we can copy without disturbing the playback. So I copy now maybe into Delta. Consider that without the USB we have some more comprehensive controls of the layer knob. For the USB drive to be recognized again, insert the back end, enter the clone load save menu, and then the USB drive is available. It is possible to load individual audio files into a layer. You need to enter the clone load save menu, which you can do with shift, capture and strike in that order. You will need to ensure that you are on the first page so that the first LED area is pulsing. You can move between the three available pages using the strike or the capture buttons. So the first one is the clone and load layer page. You need to ensure that you have audio files prepared on your USB drive. In the Arbor library directory you have named directories 1.1 sample, 1.2 sample, etc. etc. So those directories can be filled with audio files that will be loaded when selecting the appropriate slot. Ensure that Omega is amber, that means access to the USB drive is available. If Omega is white, turn beyond the first six clone settings until Omega turns amber. As soon as Omega is amber, we have a system that the amber LEDs show the bank and the white LEDs show the slots. So for instance, now we would be loading the 2.4 sample directory from the Arbor library directory. I change to 3.1 preview of the first three seconds of the audio file is available. Hold down shift for more than three seconds.
So for example now 4-6. Preview starts after holding shift for at least 3 seconds. Some more droney guitar sample. Let's check the sample 4-3. Or two one. Double tap shift to load this file into the layer gamma as gamma was selected when we entered the clone load menu. It is also possible to load several shorter audio files into a single layer. Obviously the layer is restricted to 10 accessible and 13 sounding seconds altogether. We can load any number of short audio files into a single layer as long as the total length of all the files does not exceed 10 seconds. I now choose layer Epsilon. In the folder 66 sample I actually included five bell samples and each of them is two seconds long. After loading these five samples these will be evenly distributed along the snake of the arbor. If I now preview we can hear the first sample. To load the samples I double tap shift. I select the layer Epsilon. So the first sample, the second sample, the third, the fourth and the fifth. The order of the samples distributed over the layer is determined by the order of the files in the directory. So use the naming to determine the order of your samples. I call them 1 underscore bell, 2 underscore bell, etc. If you have more files than the 10 seconds, the rest of the files will be ignored. A little bit of file management, any combination of samples can be created. On the Arbor we can load scenes. These are collections of up to 6 audio files for all the layers that are loaded simultaneously into each of the layers. Access scenes through the Arbor Scenes directory on the USB flash drive. Scenes also have the benefit of customizable presets that enable a set of specific Arbor configurations. To load a scene we go to the second page of the Clone, Load and Save menu. When turning the layer knob we have Omega White at first, giving us six internal slots. So Alpha, Beta, Gamma up to Zeta, which are used for preset settings in the Arbor by factory default. When turning further the Omega turns Amber. We are now accessing the USB flash drive. A few examples, first bank, third slot, second bank and fourth slot. 6th slot of the 2nd bank, etc, etc. I will be loading now scene 4-1. To load the scene, double tap shift. Preview is not available for the scenes. There is no coherent way to actually previewing as layers could even be empty. 
So essentially we need to know what scenes are available to load into the arbor. Loading is rather slow. You will get an animation and the audio will be loaded into all layers. For a short moment you are also shown what kind of onset mode was set, because while loading a scene a preset might be loaded. We have now the six samples of a guitar themed scene. A special thanks to Jimmy Maffei, who pulled all these different samples together, recorded a ton of them, especially for the sample library, organized in specific collections. If we just listen into another one, let's go and select bank 5, number 2, some boat piano strings that could be used to create some drones. I'll change now the onset mode so that rather than starting recording and the sense level is up from the onset input, I set it to delta, which basically just produces gate out on detected audio. I seem to have an arbor without the LED, so we can't see it. Some of you will have that as well. We can also protect so kind of how quickly they get detected. So if I now patch the trigger output to the gate in, So if we have recorded material into the arbor that we want to keep and use as a scene, it is possible to save these and export them onto the USB drive, as well as it would be possible to save them into the internal slots. If we save into an internal slot, we will be overriding the factory preset that are included into the arbor. Saving into one of the other USB based slots will be overriding the content there as well. Next time one loads the scene, the new material will be loaded. However, no files will be deleted, they are only being renamed.
I've just deleted now the content of that layer. So if I now record the first layer. I've deleted now any material that might have been on beta as well. So I record into the other one. So let's say I want this to be my scene. If I enter Shift, Capture and Strike, I make sure that the third LED area is pulsing. I select the slot. When the Omega LED is white, these would be the internal slots, which would override the factory presets. For now, I go to Bank 6, Slot 1 in the Arbor Scenes directory on the USB flash drive. I double shift and this saves now the scene into the 6.1 scene directory. The new files are named 1 underscore alpha dot wav, 2 underscore beta dot wav and so on to 6 underscore zeta dot wav and the preset dot txt file with the preset and the configuration of the arbor. Any previous files got renamed by placing the letter Z in front of the file names. Once the saving is completed, the menu is left automatically and we hear the sounds again. Alpha is now pulsing because alpha was selected before I went into the menu and selected the slot to save the scene into. I need to pick up the control again in order to be able to change the layers. In order to check that everything worked, I will now load another scene. Let's take scene 1-1, one, one, but I need to change to the load to scene page first. So I'm going to load the scene 1-1. One, one. That was double tapping shift to load the scene. So if I load scene 6, 1 again, the scene I saved just before, confirming to load it with double tap shift. Everything is loaded again the way how I had recorded the audio into the layers. To download the sample library for the Arbor, go to the Instru website, select sample libraries from the support tab, and then select the Arbor sample library.zip. After downloading the Arbor sample library, unzip the file and then from the content of this folder you can decide which Arbor library folder you would like to use. Six are available. The Arbor itself on the USB drive will only recognize the folder called underscore Arbor underscore library. So having the USB drive of the Arbor inserted into the computer, you can simply click and drag 
the library folder you would like to have and replace the existing one. If you would like to use one of the other Arbor libraries, for example the second one, I would suggest to rename the first one in order to be able to rename the one you want to underscore Arbor underscore library in order to click and drag that folder onto the USB drive. We always want to replace the folder on the Arbor USB drive. Similar procedure is for the Arbor scenes. On the Arbor library you only have one Arbor scenes folder so you can simply click and drag that folder in order to replace the Arbor scenes folder on the USB drive. I would like to show how you can create a quick temporary preset. Choose a preset file from one of the available presets in the scenes. Copy it and paste it onto the root directory of the USB drive. Open that file in a text editor. And then check or make sure that the first parameter load configuration is changed to number three in order to allow sounds and preset to be loaded. For this, I could change the input mode to stereo, but I leave that at mono at the moment. But I will change the face switch because I intend my arbor to be patched in stereo. And in preparation for a little video I'm going to record sometime soon, I'm changing the capture mode, the capture CV mode to number two to re trigger. And then I'm looking for the follow mode setting because that I would like to set to one in order for the arbor to go directly into the follow mode. Save this file, close the text editor, unplug the USB drive, insert it into the Arbor and power cycle the Arbor to load the preset. I have reinserted the USB stick into the computer in order to see whether the preset was loaded. The file got renamed. What we can see here as well is that the update of which happened to be um, that USB stick had been applied to the Arbor as well.